A supermassive black hole SMBH is the largest type of black hole, on the order of hundreds of thousands to billions of solar masses M. Observational evidence indicates that all or nearly all massive galaxies contain a supermassive black hole, located at the galaxy's center. In the case of the Milky Way, the supermassive black hole corresponds to the location of Sagittarius A**. Accretion of interstellar gas onto supermassive black holes is the process responsible for powering quasars and other types of active galactic nuclei. Description Supermassive black holes have properties that distinguish them from lower mass classifications. First, the average density of a SMBH defined as the mass of the black hole divided by the volume within its Schwarzschild radius can be less than the density of water in the case of some SMBHs. This is because the Schwarzschild radius is directly proportional to its mass. Since the volume of a spherical object such as the event horizon of a non-rotating black hole is directly proportional to the cube of the radius, the density of a black hole is inversely proportional to the square of the mass, and thus higher mass black holes have lower average density. In addition, the tidal forces in the vicinity of the event horizon are significantly weaker for massive black holes. The tidal force on a body at the event horizon is likewise inversely proportional to the square of the mass, a person on the surface of the Earth and one at the event horizon of a 10 million m black hole experience about the same tidal force between their head and feet. Unlike with stellar mass black holes, one would not experience significant tidal force until very deep into the black hole. History of research The story of how supermassive black holes were found began with the investigation by Martin Schmidt of the radio source 3C273 in 1963. Initially this was thought to be a star, but the spectrum proved puzzling. It was determined to be hydrogen emission lines that had been red-shifted, indicating the object was moving away from the Earth. Hubble's law showed that the object was located several billion light-years away, and thus must be emitting the energy equivalent of hundreds of galaxies. The rate of light variations of the source, dubbed a quasi-stellar object, or quasar, suggested the emitting region had a diameter of one parsec or less. Four such sources had been identified by 1964. In 1963, Fred Hoyle and W. A. Fowler proposed the existence of hydrogen-burning supermassive stars SMS as an explanation for the compact dimensions and high energy output of quasars. These would have a mass of about 105 to 109 m. However, Richard Feynman noted stars above a certain critical mass are dynamically unstable and would collapse into a black hole, at least if they were non-rotating. Fowler then proposed that these supermassive stars would undergo a series of collapse and explosion oscillations, thereby explaining the energy output pattern. Appenzeller and Fricke built models of this behavior, but found that the resulting star would still undergo collapse, concluding that a non-rotating 0.75 times 106 m SMS cannot escape collapse to a black hole by burning its hydrogen through the CNO cycle. Edwin E. Salpeter and Yakov B. Zeldovich made the proposal in 1964 that matter falling onto a massive compact object would explain the properties of quasars. It would require a mass of around 108 m to match the output of these objects. Donald Lyndon Bell noted in 1969 that the infalling gas would form a flat disk that spirals into the central Schwarzschild throat. He noted that the relatively low output of nearby galactic cores implied these were old, inactive quasars. Meanwhile, in 1967, Martin Ryle and Malcolm Longer suggested that nearly all sources of extra-galactic radio emission could be explained by a model in which particles are ejected from galaxies at relativistic velocities, meaning they are moving near the speed of light. Martin Ryle, Malcolm Longer, and Peter Scheuer then proposed in 1973 that the compact central nucleus could be the original energy source for these relativistic jets. Arthur M. Wolfe and Jeffrey Burbage noted in 1970 that the large velocity dispersion of the stars in the nuclear region of elliptical galaxies could only be explained by a large mass concentration at the nucleus, larger than could be explained by ordinary stars. They showed that the behavior could be explained by a massive black hole with up to 1010 m, or a large number of smaller black holes with masses below 103 m. 
Dynamical evidence for a massive dark object was found at the core of the active elliptical galaxy Messier 87 in 1978, initially estimated at 5 times 109 m. Discovery of similar behavior in other galaxies soon followed, including the Andromeda Galaxy in 1984 and the Sombrero Galaxy in 1988. Donald Lyndon Bell and Martin Rees hypothesized in 1971 that the center of the Milky Way galaxy would contain a massive black hole. Sagittarius A asterisk was discovered and named on February 13 and 15, 1974, by astronomers Bruce Ballack and Robert Brown using the Green Bank Interferometer of the National Radio Astronomy Observatory. They discovered a radio source that emits synchrotron radiation, it was found to be dense and immobile because of its gravitation. This was, therefore, the first indication that a supermassive black hole exists in the center of the Milky Way. The Hubble Space Telescope, launched in 1990, provided the resolution needed to perform more refined observations of galactic nuclei. In 1994 the faint object spectrograph on the Hubble was used to observe Messier 87, finding that ionized gas was orbiting the central part of the nucleus at a velocity of plus or minus 500 km per second. The data indicated a concentrated mass of 2.4 plus or minus 0.7 times 109 m lay within a 0.25 span, providing strong evidence of a supermassive black hole. Using the Very Long Baseline Array to observe Messier 106, Miyoshi et al. 1995 were able to demonstrate that the emission from an H20 maser in this galaxy came from a gaseous disk in the nucleus that orbited a concentrated mass of 3.6 times 107 m, which was constrained to a radius of 0.13 parsecs. They noted that a swarm of solar mass black holes within a radius this small would not survive for long without undergoing collisions, making a supermassive black hole the sole viable candidate. Formation The origin of supermassive black holes remains an open field of research. Astrophysicists agree that once a black hole is in place in the center of a galaxy, it can grow by accretion of matter and by merging with other black holes. There are, however, several hypotheses for the formation mechanisms and initial masses of the progenitors, or seeds, of supermassive black holes. One hypothesis is that the seeds are black holes of tens or perhaps hundreds of solar masses that are left behind by the explosions of massive stars and grow by accretion of matter. Another model hypothesizes that before the first stars, large gas clouds could collapse into a quasi-star, which would in turn collapse into a black hole of around 20 m. The quasi-star becomes unstable to radial perturbations because of electron-positron pair production in its core and could collapse directly into a black hole without a supernova explosion which would eject most of its mass, preventing the black hole from growing as fast. Given sufficient mass nearby, the black hole could accrete to become intermediate mass black hole and possibly a SMBH if the accretion rate persists. Another model involves a dense stellar cluster undergoing core collapse as the negative heat capacity of the system drives the velocity dispersion in the core to relativistic speeds. Finally, primordial black holes could have been produced directly from external pressure in the first moments after the Big Bang. These primordial black holes would then have more time than any of the above models to accrete, allowing them sufficient time to reach supermassive sizes. Formation of black holes from the deaths of the first stars has been extensively studied and corroborated by observations. The other models for black hole formation listed above are theoretical. The difficulty in forming a supermassive black hole resides in the need for enough matter to be in a small enough volume. This matter needs to have very little angular momentum in order for this to happen. Normally, the process of accretion involves transporting a large initial endowment of angular momentum outwards, and this appears to be the limiting factor in black hole growth. This is a major component of the theory of accretion disks. Gas accretion is the most efficient and also the most conspicuous way in which black holes grow. The majority of the mass growth of supermassive black holes is thought to occur through episodes of rapid gas accretion, which are observable as active galactic nuclei or quasars. Observations reveal that quasars were much more frequent when the universe was younger, indicating that supermassive black holes formed and grew early. 
A major constraining factor for theories of supermassive black hole formation is the observation of distant luminous quasars, which indicate that supermassive black holes of billions of solar masses had already formed when the universe was less than one billion years old. This suggests that supermassive black holes arose very early in the universe, inside the first massive galaxies. A vacancy exists in the observed mass distribution of black holes. Black holes that spawn from dying stars have masses 5 to 80 m. The minimal supermassive black hole is approximately 100,000 solar masses. Mass scales between these ranges are dubbed intermediate mass black holes. Such a gap suggests a different formation process. However, some models suggest that ultraluminous X-ray sources ULXs may be black holes from this missing group. There is, however, an upper limit to how large supermassive black holes can grow. So-called ultramassive black holes UMBHs, which are at least ten times the size of supermassive black holes, appear to have a theoretical upper limit of around 50 billion solar masses, as anything above this slows growth down to a crawl the slowdown tends to start around 10 billion solar masses and causes the unstable accretion disk surrounding the black hole to coalesce into stars that orbit it. A small minority of sources argue that distant supermassive black holes whose large size is hard to explain so soon after the Big Bang such as Ulash J1342 plus 0928, may be evidence that our universe is the result of a big bounce, instead of a big bang, with these supermassive black holes being formed before the big bounce. <laughs> Doppler measurements Some of the best evidence for the presence of black holes is provided by the Doppler effect whereby light from nearby orbiting matter is red shifted when receding and blue shifted when advancing. For matter very close to a black hole the orbital speed must be comparable with the speed of light, so receding matter will appear very faint compared with advancing matter, which means that systems with intrinsically symmetric disks and rings will acquire a highly asymmetric visual appearance. This effect has been allowed for in modern computer-generated images such as the example presented here, based on a plausible model for the supermassive black hole in SGRA** at the center of our own galaxy. However the resolution provided by presently available telescope technology is still insufficient to confirm such predictions directly. What already has been observed directly in many systems are the lower non-relativistic velocities of matter orbiting further out from what are presumed to be black holes. Direct Doppler measures of water masers surrounding the nuclei of nearby galaxies have revealed a very fast Keplerian motion, only possible with a high concentration of matter in the center. Currently, the only known objects that can pack enough matter in such a small space are black holes, or things that will evolve into black holes within astrophysically short timescales. For active galaxies farther away, the width of broad spectral lines can be used to probe the gas orbiting near the event horizon. The technique of reverberation mapping uses variability of these lines to measure the mass and perhaps the spin of the black hole that powers active galaxies. Gravitation from supermassive black holes in the center of many galaxies is thought to power active objects such as Seyfert galaxies and quasars. An empirical correlation between the size of supermassive black holes and the stellar velocity dispersion sigma display style sigma of a galaxy bulge is called the M sigma relation. Topic: In the Milky Way. Astronomers are very confident that the Milky Way galaxy has a supermassive black hole at its center, 26,000 light years from the solar system, in a region called Sagittarius A asterisk because. The star S2 follows an elliptical orbit with a period of 15.2 years and a paracenter closest distance of 17 light hours, 1.8 times 1013 meters or 120 astronomical units from the center of the central object. From the motion of star S2, the object's mass can be estimated as 4.1 million m or about 8.2 times 1036 kg. The radius of the central object must be less than 17 light hours, because otherwise, S2 would collide with it. In fact, recent observations of the star S14 indicate that the radius is no more than 6.25 light hours, about the diameter of Uranus's orbit. 
No known astronomical object other than a black hole can contain 4.1 million m in this volume of space. The Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics and UCLA Galactic Center Group have provided the strongest evidence to date that Sagittarius A is the site of a supermassive black hole, based on data from ESO's Very Large Telescope and the Keck Telescope. On January 5, 2015, NASA reported observing an X ray flare 400 times brighter than usual, a record breaker, from Sagittarius. Sagittarius A asterisk. The unusual event may have been caused by the breaking of part of an asteroid falling into the black hole or by the entanglement of magnetic field lines within gas flowing into Sagittarius A asterisk, according to astronomers. <laughs> Outside the Milky Way Unambiguous dynamical evidence for supermassive black holes exists only in a handful of galaxies, these include the Milky Way, the local group galaxies M31 and M32, and a few galaxies beyond the local group, e.g. NGC 4395. In these galaxies, the mean square or RMS velocities of the stars or gas rises proportionally to 1, R near the center, indicating a central point mass. In all other galaxies observed to date, the RMS velocities are flat, or even falling, toward the center, making it impossible to state with certainty that a supermassive black hole is present. Nevertheless, it is commonly accepted that the center of nearly every galaxy contains a supermassive black hole. The reason for this assumption is the M-sigma relation, a tight low scatter relation between the mass of the hole in the ten or so galaxies with secure detections, and the velocity dispersion of the stars in the bulges of those galaxies. This correlation, although based on just a handful of galaxies, suggests to many astronomers a strong connection between the formation of the black hole and the galaxy itself. The nearby Andromeda Galaxy, 2.5 million light years away, contains a 1.1 to 2.3 times 108, 110 to 230 million m central black hole, significantly larger than the Milky Way's. The largest supermassive black hole in the Milky Way's vicinity appears to be that of M87, at a mass of 6.4 plus or minus 0.5 times 109 c, 6.4 billion m at a distance of 53.5 million light years. On December 5, 2011, astronomers discovered the largest supermassive black hole in the nearby universe yet found, that of the supergiant elliptical galaxy NGC 4889, with a mass of 2.1 times 1010 21 billion m at a distance of 336 million light years away in the Coma Berenices constellation. Black holes in distant, highly luminous quasars are much larger. The hyperluminous quasar APM 08279 plus 5255 has a supermassive black hole with a mass of 2.3 times 1010 23 billion m. Larger still is at another hyperluminous quasar S50014 plus 81, one of the largest supermassive black holes yet found, which has a mass of 4.0 times 1010 40 billion m, or 10,000 times the mass of the black hole at the Milky Way Galactic Center. Both quasars are 12.1 billion light years away. The most massive black hole ever discovered, Tun 618, weighs in at 6.6 .6 times 1010 66 billion m. It is located 10.4 billion light years away from us. Some galaxies, such as the galaxy 4C plus 37.11, appear to have two supermassive black holes at their centers, forming a binary system. If they collided, the event would create strong gravitational waves. Binary supermassive black holes are believed to be a common consequence of galactic mergers. The binary pair in OJ287, 3.5 billion light years away, contains the most massive black hole in a pair, with a mass estimated at 18 billion m. In 2011, a supermassive black hole was discovered in the dwarf galaxy Hanais 2-10, which has no bulge. The precise implications for this discovery on black hole formation are unknown, but may indicate that black holes formed before bulges. On March 28, 2011, a supermassive black hole was seen tearing a midsize star apart. That is the only likely explanation of the observations that day of sudden X ray radiation and the follow up broadband observations. The source was previously an inactive galactic nucleus, and from study of the outburst the galactic nucleus is estimated to be a SMBH with mass of the order of a million solar masses. 
This rare event is assumed to be a relativistic outflow material being emitted in a jet at a significant fraction of the speed of light from a star tidally disrupted by the SMBH. A significant fraction of a solar mass of material is expected to have accreted onto the SMBH. Subsequent long-term observation will allow this assumption to be confirmed if the emission from the jet decays at the expected rate for mass accretion onto a SMBH. In 2012, astronomers reported an unusually large mass of approximately 17 billion m for the black hole in the compact, lenticular galaxy NGC 1277, which lies 220 million light-years away in the constellation Perseus. The putative black hole has approximately 59% of the mass of the bulge of this lenticular galaxy 14% of the total stellar mass of the galaxy. Another study reached a very different conclusion, this black hole is not particularly overmassive, estimated at between 2 and 5 billion m with 5 billion m being the most likely value. On 28 February 2013 astronomers reported on the use of the New Star satellite to accurately measure the spin of a supermassive black hole for the first time, in NGC 1365, reporting that the event horizon was spinning at almost the speed of light. In September 2014, data from different X-ray telescopes has shown that the extremely small, dense, ultra-compact dwarf galaxy M60 UCD1 hosts a 20 million solar mass black hole at its center, accounting for more than 10% of the total mass of the galaxy. The discovery is quite surprising, since the black hole is five times more massive than the Milky Way's black hole despite the galaxy being less than five thousandths the mass of the Milky Way. Some galaxies, however, lack any supermassive black holes in their centers. Although most galaxies with no supermassive black holes are very small, dwarf galaxies, one discovery remains mysterious. The supergiant elliptical CD galaxy A2261 BCG has not been found to contain an active supermassive black hole, despite the galaxy being one of the largest galaxies known, 10 times the size and 1,000 times the mass of the Milky Way. Since a supermassive black hole will only be visible while it is accreting, a supermassive black hole can be nearly invisible, except in its effects on stellar orbits. In December 2017, astronomers reported the detection of the most distant quasar currently known, Ulash J1342 plus 0928, containing the most distant supermassive black hole, at a reported redshift of Z equals 7.54, surpassing the redshift of 7 for the previously known most distant quasar Ulash J1120 plus 0641. Equals Topic. Hawking evaporation Equals if black holes evaporate via Hawking radiation, a supermassive black hole with a mass of 1011 100 billion m will evaporate in around 2 times 10,100 years. Some monster black holes in the universe are predicted to continue to grow up to perhaps 1014 m during the collapse of superclusters of galaxies. Even these would evaporate over a timescale of up to 10,106 years. See also